All right, I believe we're now live on Facebook and I am Brendan Evans. I'm the executive director with Leadership Lincoln. And today we're gonna to talk with my friend, Kathy Petch about her leadership experience and her thoughts on leadership. But before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping things. We've got the State of the City, which will be online again this year. And you can find tickets at leadershiplincoln.org. And that's happening next Tuesday morning, September 28th. So keep an eye out for that. And then we'll have another hot topics coming up in October. And I believe this is the one in which we get to meet the new chiefs. Although I could be mistaken. It's been a, it's been a busy week. We had our leaders uh, retreat up in um, Camp Carol Joy Halling for our fellows and advocates class. And we're excited to get the year started. And with that, let me uh, just to ask Kathy, tell us a little bit about your leadership journey. Like, where, how did you, were you in girls' state? Were you a student council person growing up? Like, where did your leadership journey begin? First of all, Brenda and I was conceived, born, and will die in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I'm proud of it. Um, you asked about my high school, maybe. I was, uh, I was on the newspaper. I was a newspaper editor. So that's where I got interested in journalism. And that's what my first degree is in from the University of Nebraska. Um, I think the first uh, uh, public leadership role I took was we moved to Ryan Street and it had a beautifully curved uh, paver brick street in front of our house. And the city had decided that they were gonna come over and overlay it with asphalt. Now you have to understand this is kind of a tricky question for me because our family business is asphalt paving. Um, so, but I decided that it was a beautiful street and we love the historic part about it. It was part of Lincoln. And so I called up the city engineer and um, actually I first went door to door and got my neighbors to sign a petition knock, knock, you know, the, the first door is always the hardest. And you kind of learn that when you run for office, but they get easier after that. And I met a lot of wonderful people up and down a couple of blocks and talked them into, they get new approaches if they would pay the asphalt, but they were willing to save the bricks. And so I went to the city engineer and he came out, gave him the petition, he came out and measured and calculated and said, yeah, lady, you're right. It's got the right curve in it and it meets all the specifications, so we won't be paving it. And that little experience kind of gave me confidence to be a little bit more public in some of the things I've done. Um, it, you have to have the support of your family for sure. And I love to tell the story about uh, my, when I went to Leadership Lincoln, and I think you noted it was fellows too, uh, we had our retreat um, at Platte River Park. And, and I was on the school board at the time, and I was also president of the Junior League. It was a busy year. I, and I was president of the, of the school board that year too. Meg Lowerman and I, and I used to come back from Leadership Lincoln and sit down in the school board room and go, ah, anyway, and start the evening again. Anyway, I was at the retreat that year and um, KOR wanted the um, uh, Reagan campaign people to come to the, well, they were coming to Lincoln and they wanted, she wanted the campaign people and Ronald Reagan to be uh, serenaded by the Lincoln High School Band. Well, if you carefully read school policy, that's against school policy to participate in political use your resources for political advance. So the board had decided not to honor that request. And the phone started ringing when I left my home and it rang and rang and rang while I was gone. And my daughter who must have been, oh, I don't know, she was a teenager at the time, um, answered the phone, was answering the phone for me and answered the phone and the other voice said, this is Roland Lukey. And she said, oh, yeah, sure, right. The mayor's really calling my mom, you know. Uh, well, it was Roland Lukey. And after she gave him a little guff, she took his message. Um, but I think the whole moral of that story is you got you to gotta enroll your family to be able to do some of the kinds of things that leaders need to do. 
So I had, that's a, that's a really great kind of segue to how do you navigate that challenge? You know, when you've got all the political powers that be in presidential campaigns leaning down on you and you're, you're standing in their way because it's, it's the right thing to do or it's the policy like. Well, politics were not quite as vicious then. And I'm not really gonna talk about politics. I've made myself a new rule or an old rule I'm reinstating. Thank you, Brendan. And, um, but they weren't, they weren't as cruel then. And it was probably easier to say no than that it might be now. Um, I don't know, it, we, everybody stood together. I, you know, the board, we, the board had all agreed and the policy was there. I think that's one thing I learned about policy making is that you can't make it in the middle of a question or a crisis. You have to have policy in place before there is an incident. And luckily we had that policy in place and could print it out and show it. Um, and one of the things I did when I was on the school board is my gosh, went through the whole policy book and updated it. And at that time we were talking about probably four inches, four inches of binder um, to do that. And it took us a good long time, maybe six months to do it. But the lesson I learned was, like I said, that it needs, you need to make decisions based on policy that's been predated. It's the same and way, it's the same way with, with relationships. You know, the, the key to leadership is having relationships and you can't wait until you need people. You have to, you have to listen to their stories and you have to be in a somewhat of a relationship before you need to call on them. Yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's really, I think that's really true. Um, so you were in Leadership Lincoln Fellows 2. Uh, what was that experience like? It was great. I loved it. They weren't going to let me in because um, I, I was, I was the, you know, in the old days, they used to have sort of representatives of different groups. And I was supposed to be the junior league representative. But um, they, the year before the league decided not to participate. And I always felt sorry for Linda Wolf who didn't get to do the Leadership Lincoln one. But in two, they decided I should be the representative. But the fact that I was already president and already president of the school board, Leadership Lincoln was a little, eh, you know, what, oh, all right, well, maybe we'll let her do this. And I, I, would, and I certainly learned a lot and made a lot of relationships just like we referred to. And, um, it was, it, and I've always encouraged everyone else to um, do that. And, and in the past, there's always been a school, a school district, district district representative too, which I think is great. Yeah, um, LPS has been a, a great partner for Leadership Lincoln and Steve Joel really has made himself available, especially last year in talking oh. through a lot of the challenges that they had with COVID. And I, I, I think that while challenging times are not often fun, they also uh, reveal a lot about a lot about leadership. Um, what's a what's a another challenging time that you've had as a leader, and, and how did you navigate it? Well, um, I can think of lots, and I've always tried to turn them into opportunities. I think there's a Chinese saying for that um, that you can learn from where you don't succeed. Um, uh, gosh, hard to pick one. <laughs> um, when I ran for school board, it, it had previously been by at large membership and all the school board members at that time, we're talking 1983 now, and all the, that's, gosh, gonna be 40 some years ago, as already is. And um, that all the school board members at that present time could almost see each other from their kitchen windows. I mean, at large didn't really mean that the whole district was represented. And so the LEA and Saul Lewinsky came to town and decided that um, there should be district elections. Now, the problem was that you had to be nominated by that at large, the at large area, the whole school district. And then a month later, that was in April, and a month later in May, turn around and run by district, which was a very tough thing to do in a transitional political campaign. Um, and I was, I was going to go to law school. That was my ambition. 
and I'm gonna do it then. And I had an attorney tell me that I'll learn so much more if I ran for the school board. And he was absolutely right that the breadth of things that you learn on the school board from food services to curriculum, to health services, to all sorts of transportation, budgets, um, it goes on and on. It's a very wide, wide learning curve. And um, I think that the, the best thing about that learning curve is that, well, the, the best and the worst thing about the learning curve is you throw in, you're talking about your children and my children and other people's children. And that really heightens the um, emotion and the importance of those decisions in food services and transportation and budget. Um, so that was a challenge for me. And I, I did my homework. You really have to, you spend more time doing your homework than you do in public meetings. And um, that was really important. I used to cheese, we used to you know, get deliveries of packets. Now they do it all electronically, but you used to get these big deliveries of big packets on, um, they used to come on Friday before the board meeting. And I used to cheese Lou Roper when he would come carrying his packet and sit by the mic and rip open the packet into the microphone because he hadn't looked at it yet. Um, now, you know, we weren't televised then, thank goodness, um, but it still was a, <laughs> a, a telling point. Um, challenges. So that was one challenge to be elected in the first district race. Um, and I did have an opponent and I, I think I told you the other day, she, I just saw her obituary and I went, her name is Bobby Myers. And I wanna say that she went on to do all sorts of really nice and great things with the school district. She served in a lot of different positions. I can't even list them all, but um, so, and then the second time I ran, I didn't have an opponent. I think I scared them away. I don't know. Um, anyway, be, it's hard enough some mornings to wake up in the morning and, and let alone pull the covers up and, and think you have to go out and, I, I worked at the newspaper during that time. And it's the only place I've ever worked where if you go in and you can go in and put your feet up on the desk and read the paper and look like you're working. Um, anyway, <laughs> so going to, you know, getting out of bed every morning, knowing that, and, and at that time there were still two papers and there were still two reporters. So you got two different versions of the board meeting plus what I knew about the board meeting and to go into work in the morning, like I said, was you got to put your game face on. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Um, so after you were um, served on the school board, you were also, you, know, you helped start the community learning centers in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> when I went to, when I lived in Lander, Wyoming, and when I was working in the National Outdoor Leadership School, um, one of my friends who was very involved with the schools was talk to me and they're like wow you know we really look at Lincoln's model for the community learning centers and they've really done it right could you talk a little I mean how do you even sure. lead from starting from nothing to make a thing yeah. like that yeah and I think the latest total is maybe 27 or 28 community learning centers right now um, and we started like you said we got a um, they got a grant um, a full service community school grant that they the district had tried for for like two years and didn't make it because because poverty in Lincoln and I think it's still this way poverty in Lincoln is very diverse it's dispersed is what I want to say you can't just point to one neighborhood and say here's mm -hmm. the poor part of town and and the grants were awarded on the basis of visible poverty and then we applied for the third time and it was Bob Carey's going away present to us. And when he left the Senate, um, we got the grant. And that started, that gave us a little money to invest. And Lincoln is a perfect Petri dish for full service community schools. We already had neighborhood schools, which I fought real hard to maintain. Actually, when I went on the school board to begin with, they were closing schools. They were closing Bethany and they had closed um, the one down under the viaduct, I can't think of the name right minute. And um, we, we invested, the school board at that time invested in what you would call our inner city. I mean, we were growing, starting to grow on the edges and there was pressure 
to um, build schools. That's why we have Park Middle School in um, Everett uh, Elementary because Everett used to be a junior high and Park used to be a middle or an elementary school. And instead of building a new, at that time, West Lincoln Middle School, junior high, I think they still were because we switched to middle schools. Um, we switched the two buildings out and they are, in my opinion, still operating very efficiently and very effectively. Um, so neighborhood schools it was a great basis in our community for full service community schools, which if people don't know, involves not only the students and the staff, but the neighborhood surrounding the school in the, <clears throat> in the delivery of services. Um, yeah, we were, we were kind of, Marty Blank uh, from the Coalition of Community Schools really took a shine to us. And <clears throat> I'd be remiss not to mention Leanne Johnson. She and I shared the job because it was a, a big job as you had indicated, starting from scratch. Um, we got to play with, um, we got to make up our own rules is what I like to say. Um, and we were kind of went rogue, excuse me a minute. No, absolutely. And um, I remember taking, um, we, the city was a great partner too. And, um, and the newspaper was a great partner. And that is another sad story about what has happened to our community newspaper. Um, talk about failures. Um, well, we went to New York and took uh, Brian Walkman, who was head of the United Way, and uh, Rick Hoppe, who was the chief of staff for the mayor. And, and all of the mayors had been very supportive. And um, we went to New York and Rick Hoppe turned around our first day there and he goes, you guys are rock stars. I mean, <laughs> everybody comes up and goes, I know Leanne, I know Kathy, you know so on. So, I mean, it was a big conference. I have a puppy dog here that is new in our house and is trying to enter our conversation. But well, we're, we're a dog friendly, we're a dog friendly conversation. So that's, that's fine. Okay. Who is it? Her name is Hilda. She's another Clumber Spaniel. We lost our Daisy and um, <clears throat> she came from Croatia. Oh, that's She's a good long ways. Yeah, there are, and I have Facebook friends who now communicate and post in Croatian. <laughs> I was going to ask, did you have to learn some Croatian? Did she learn yeah. some Croatian? We did tried. We tried. It's a whole different language. I mean, I thought maybe it would be closer to German, but it's not. Yeah, it's like a whole different linguistic route. Right, right. Well, Leanne was in my class. She was in Fellows 19. So I met her 18 years ago when I went through Leadership Lincoln. Okay which is always easy for me to remember because my daughter was born just at the, at the beginning of that, yeah. that program year. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if, when you have a vision for something, how do you as a leader get people to, to, to work towards that vision? How do you bring them along? This is going to sound self-serving, but a lot of people helped us out with the vision and I mean, you know, I can't see Chris. I mean, nobody he, nobody heralds him for the community learning centers, but you know, I always call Kent the, the sheriff of Lincoln. And I mean, somebody else may be mayor, but he's the sheriff. And you know what? They liked me. I mean, I had, I had a relationship with them as distant as it might've been with some of them. Um, Walt Radcliffe, you know, he, behind the scenes, all, I mean, the bond issues and all sorts of things for community learning centers. Um, it, it's about relationships and um, whether you can build them. And, um, you know, I, being on the board was a great learning opportunity, a great opportunity for me to meet all the really neat people in Lincoln. Well, that's what I was going to say is how did, what kinds of things did you do? to build those relationships before you needed them? I write personal thank you notes. I used to write personal thank you notes, but my hands don't work anymore. So I, that's a sad thing that's gone by the wayside, but writing thank you notes. I mean, you know, there used to, used to be an old junior league joke about you can't keep up with the thank you notes if you have group sex. 
you know. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, that's one thing. Um, recognizing little things, you know, um, little things you may notice about people and acknowledging them. Listening, um, I think my brown eyes help with that. Um, you try, you gotta be a good listener. Um, that's a major skill in communication and that's how you build a relationship. Uh, joint experiences, you know, I went, to, I went to school with Walt at high school. We called him Bird, you know. Um, Ken Seacrest did some work for my father and met me along the way. Um, I don't know, you know, and being fifth generation in Lincoln, Nebraska is, you know, or fifth generation company in Lincoln, Nebraska. My father was, or my great grandfather was a stonemason. This is a fun story if we've got a minute. Um, yeah. The school teachers, um, when he was in the business, the school teachers would all buy the Sears and Roebuck houses, you know, and school teachers couldn't be married then. And they would get a Sears and Roebuck house, and my grandfather, would put it together for them. It was kind of like a Lego set. And he would do the found the foundation and all the brickwork, the stonework that needed to be doing it, put it together. And I found his leather um, journal and he made like, he would write it all down and he made like a dollar seven a year or whatever. And he did the stables at Wayuka where I was a trustee for a while. And he did the water tower there. So my grandfather was a bricklayer my dad did concrete uh, sidewalks or yeah, mostly sidewalks. And in fact, when Adam took his child to Eastridge Elementary, Adam, my son, took his child to Eastridge Elementary, there was a stamp that said Cather and Sons Construction, um, my maiden name. And then uh, my husband took over the business and they did asphalt paving. I knew where all the fast food places were, the new ones. And then my son is recycling asphalt shingles. And he tells me there's more asphalt in a, in a roof than there is in the street. And when you recycle it and um, he's recycling concrete and other things and doing um, also paving. Um, he's doing some paving for the city these days. Um, so anyway, you know, you can't help but have some connections if you work on them mm -hmm. um, through that kind of a history. So I, I, I'm just, I don't think Adam's been through Leadership Lincoln yet. You're going to have to put in the good word for us. It'd be great to have him come uh, participate in fellows. You know, it would. For exact, I, yeah. I'll, 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 I don't have much influence with him anymore, but I'll whisper. <laughs> okay. Well, that's just, you know, so getting back to the Leadership Lincoln part, did, were, did you meet new people going through Leadership Lincoln or were you meeting a lot of familiar faces or were there, there people that you knew and it helped you to develop those relationships? Yeah, yes. I think that there were people I knew and we, when you have a common experience, that's, that's a great relationship builder. Um, gosh, I could name a few, but I'll leave somebody out, so I won't. Um, but yeah, that, that's how it worked, Brendan. I think that, um, and, and, if you, you may not recall, but it, Leadership Lincoln used to be a lot more vigorous. I know that it has to be t tailored to more people's lifestyles now than it did then because it was, it was an all day, once a month, long haul, a lot of, lot of hard thinking, a lot of hard work um, mentally and a little bit physically too. Like I said, at the end of the day, I was pretty exhausted <laughs> and still had to run a school board meeting. So, you know, yeah, our, our fellows and our, it's, it's changed a little bit. So our, our executives do a half day, our fellows and our advocates still do a full day, um, or they both do a full day now. Advocates had been Project All, which developed when mm -hmm. the um, foundations looked around and, and felt that we needed greater diversity on our local boards. Um, so we helped to develop some leadership for that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it, is, it, is, it has grown and changed. So I'll, I'll read you off some of the lists. I just pulled it up. Dale Goebbels, Dave yep. Lechner, Dave McBride, Deborah Allward, Ginny Wright, Gordon Schultz, Greg Wright, James Terry, Jim Perry, John mm -hmm. Becker, John Perkins, who's passed away, John Weinberg, Kim Roback, Kit Besh, Lena Flagtwit. Lana Flagtwit. Who's passed, who's passed away. away. Laurel Marsh, Lily Shangra, Shangru, Shangru, 
uh, Linda Russell Kaivinen, Mary Languecki, Meg Lauerman, Miguel Carranza, Rick Cool, Rick Rear, Rob Warner, Sarah German, Steve Lindgren, Steve Petru uh, Petronic, Petruca, Petronis. <laughs> I think you got it. Petronis. Yeah, Tom Fisher, Vaughn Robertson, and Vicki Heft. I mean, that's like a lot of people who've just done a lot of great stuff in Lincoln. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But you know what, as you were reading those, and thank you for doing that, I appreciate it. Um, some, a lot of them have moved away. Um, a number we, have. We've, see, we've seeded some other communities mm -hmm. <laughs> with, good, with, good, with good germs. <laughs> with good germs. I think that we have, you know, as, as we have people who come into Lincoln, as an exec or something mm -hmm. like that, that have participated in uh, um, other programs. I'm thinking specifically about Quentin Brown, who's the new director over at Educare, and he is just great. And he came in from the East Coast, and and he he noted, you know, he'd participated in stuff, but leadership Lincoln really is engaging in a way that is different from other communities. Part of that's that we're not directly associated with the chamber. We've got a great working relationship, but in right. most leadership programs, it's under the yes. Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Yep. Um, so what would you, we've got just a few minutes left. So if you were, if you were able to reach back in time and give younger Kathy some advice on, you know, where not to bang her shins or what, <laughs> what, what, to, what, what was the right way to go? What would you, what would you say to yourself about? I think I would be less, I think I would be less timid about wearing a skirt. There were, it, at the time, it was pretty male dominated out there. And, you know, we all we all dressed in our padded shoulders, blazers and our floppy ties around our neck, but we were still the girls in the room. And the story I have about that is when we flipped out, um, when we flipped out the land we owned on the soccer fields out by 84th and O um, next to State Farm, and traded them for their old building that is no longer with us in a good way um, or a bad way. Um, mm -hmm. We, um, Jim Gallagher and uh, the, assist, the associate for business and Phil Sco, the superintendent and Ed Perry and I went out and met with Jerry Strickland who was the president of State Farm at the time. And we were in the middle, we introduced ourselves and we, we hadn't met before. And we were in the middle of our meeting and he turned to me as if I was the secretary and said, well, write that down. That's in Bloomington, uh, Indiana. And you know, you'll need that contact. And I said, whoa, wait, we're gonna start this all over again. I'm the president of the school board. These people are the staff, you know? <laughs> And I mean, he just made the assumption that because I was the girl in the room, I was along to be the secretarial support. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of that, a lot of that. And, you know, I mean, I, I won't go into any more of it, but some of it was fairly intimidating. And I would have told myself to be braver than I was at the time. <laughs> Well, I always, I, you are one of those women in Lincoln as a leader that I have always thought of as just uh, terrifyingly, wonderfully strong and courageous. <laughs> you know, we, we had. Um, I love that adjective, terrifyingly. <laughs> <laughs> we had Lita Powell Drake. Uh, she passed away, but she was one of those, you know, who I always just seemed to. Um, look at those challenges and right in the face and just address them. And I've, and I've always admired your forthrightness in that yeah. and the strength of your character. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. Well, we're hitting 1230. Kathy, I feel like I could talk to you for hours and hours, <laughs> but I will let you go. And maybe we'll have to follow this up with a copy sometime soon. Okay. I appreciate that. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I will uh, end the Facebook stream and we will go from there. Thanks so much. Again, Brendan Evans with Leadership Lincoln and check out leadershiplincoln.org for more information about state of the city. Thanks so much.